Hello explorers and welcome to episode 30 with myself Jack and as always my co-hosts Taylor hey. and Jimmy. Steelers with the win, alright. <laughs> <laughs> at last, at long oh, last. Yeah. <laughs> and they got rid of the coach. Yes. <sighs> yes. Unbelievable news. So, I'll start with Taylor then, because I know how Jimmy's week's been. How's your week been, Taylor? Uh, my week's been good. It's been, like, beautiful weather over here in British Columbia. Um, cold, but beautiful. Um, and I just finished Falling Star last night and, from the High Republic, and oh my gosh... I knew it was coming all week that I was going to finish it, but I finally finished it and my heart is totally broken and I like cried real sobbing cry. <laughs> wait until, you, so, wait until yeah. you get to the end of the Eye of Darkness. God, no, because <laughs> Mark Young's like, I have more plans. This is nothing. Like, oh, the He's fall a... of Starlight, it's nothing. Like, <gasps> I. Oh. Yeah, I. Oof. Anyways, I hope more people get into this guy because he might be the baddest baddie there is. Just psycho. Right. And in in the um, in the Tempest Runner book, he's like a kid or whatever still, and he's mm-hmm. all meek and like silly, and it's just crazy. But yeah, that was my week. It builds up to that crash. Not nice. Jack. <laughs> how about, yeah, how about you? <laughs> yeah, my week's not been too bad. Nice and steady. Back to work. Uh, back home to see the family didn't do much to, uh, at the weekend uh, it's just boring it's nice to be back home there that's the main thing mm-hmm. no more humidity <laughs> no more no more hurricanes uh, snakes and lizards and yeah no bugs no, no. <laughs> no, it's, it's been decent what about you Jimmy? Uh, yeah so on Friday I was raking my yard because we thought we were going to have snow and it was like, I mean, I was out there in a long sleeve and a pair of jeans, felt fine. And yesterday, we have got about six inches of snow fall <gasps> from about 10 o'clock in the morning through the evening. If you go on Facebook, you guys can see it. Um, I posted, I got a memory that popped up from last year, this day. And it's like beautiful outside. It's, you know, a couple days <laughs> after Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving. And this year, all the trees have like, you know, five inches, six inches of snow on them. Um, it, was, it was pretty cool, though. Uh, so we went from a decent weather to, you know, getting hammered. Um, but, you know, it's it's cool to have the snow. It just now it's going to get all sloppy and messy and dirty and ugh. slushy. Yeah, but <laughs> we've got a big week coming up this week with swim. we got our first meets. we got one tomorrow and then one on Thursday. So we're excited for that to get rolling. And then the end of the school nice. year is coming up. So can't cool. wait. <laughs> Okay, so that's our week's uh, in, in the quick overview then. Let's head off into our force encounters this week. So force encounters then, I'll just start off real quickly. I've been noticing that the, the ammo tech guy here has got a Star Wars shirt pretty much for every single day. Um, so I'm just biding my time when I'm not with a load of guys, so to speak to approach him uh, and slip him a, uh, a little card. Um, I'm sure I'm going to do some checks this Thursday. Uh, and obviously, the checks that I have to do is part of the his job. Uh, so that's when I'll, I think I'll slip it into conversation and hopefully we'll have a new explorer on board. Very nice. <laughs> hopefully. May the force be with you. <laughs> what about you, Jimmy? You got anything? Uh, yeah, mine's not good, though. So we, we doggy sat, uh, my brother-in-law, sister-in-law's dogs. And so we already have two big dogs and we have <laughs> brought into our home two really sweet, but also big dogs. And my dog Kenobi is, doesn't like the share we found out. And he and I kind of oh. had it out. We had a rough couple days, he and I, cause he was being a real jerk to everybody. And it kind of caught, uh, brought him inside once and he plowed into me, knocked me over. I smashed my head on the side of the the uh table cut up my ear and i'm like kind <laughs> of like sam and i felt like sam whitworth <laughs> so Brilliant. that's my force encounter screaming at my dog for plowing me over knocking my head into the table and cutting open my ear so but we have reconciled the dogs are gone he and i have cuddled we've talked about it we're gonna you know we're gonna we're gonna work through this so Kobe no. and i will be okay 
<laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, so when Jimmy starts that. getting off track today, we'll know it's because he's had a concussion recently. Yeah, yeah. quite possibly um, the way I hit. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I didn't actually have a force encounter this week. The closest thing I had to a force encounter was a bunch of rocks dumping out of the back of a truck and transferred, not being lifted in the air. But I mean, I saw the weight of those rocks as they all fell out of the back of the truck. It was like three, uh, two to three foot rocks. And they're like iffy on the size. Yeah. And they hit the ground like, boom. So it was like, holy hell, Ray can just lift those with the force. And it was like, it's always weird about like what triggers us. In the real world, when you see stuff like that, you're like, oh, Ray, lifting rocks. Like, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, these were, so. yeah, like, I could not believe how loud they were dumping out of the back of the truck. Okay, I guess I did have a force encounter. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Rocks dumping out of a truck. Woo! <laughs> nice. Okay, happy day. <laughs> so, as always, like we started doing, uh, we've now got a little part of the show where we like to welcome our new explorers. So, again, this week, mm. joining us on the Gage Eccentric is Dustin Laffery. Thank you for joining us on the socials, Dustin. Hopefully see more posts uh, from yourself. Uh, and that is our only member to join uh, this week that, that I've managed to track down. Uh, I know we had Adrian Hill join back up again, uh, but he had his shout-out last week, so he's already had his five minutes of fame. <laughs> <laughs> So, happy days. Okay, so let's head over to Batu then and see what news <coughs> is coming in. Okay, so Daisy Ridley's confirmed uh, she's read the story, uh, but not the script for the new upcoming Star Wars film. Uh, she teases it, it could be the next film to um, release. However, Ridley knows the planned story for the upcoming film. She doesn't know if it's the only story to feature um, Rey Skywalker. She shares that she doesn't know if there's more films to come for her and doesn't want to commit to saying there's only one at this time, but she's well aware that there could be more, especially when uh, Lindolf was penning the project. Various reports claim that the film was being written as a standalone film, but... If successful, it could continue into a series of films. So when we actually thought that the Skywalker saga was over, it's only just beginning. Uh, she was then quoted saying that the story is really cool and she's waiting to read the script because obviously she hasn't got any other updates. It's not what uh, she's expected or she expected, rather, but she is very, very excited. Do we want to see more Skywalker storylines? For me personally, no. Let's have something new. What you guys? Um, I kind of want to hear about what's going on with them. Like, I, I mean, like Skywalker saga has been the staple of Star Wars, but it's not. It's not like Ray's even really a Skywalker. That's a whole different topic <gasps> on its own. That's Taylor a whole different it. topic on its own. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Um, I'm excited for the film. I, I'm. I'm always looking forward to the next Star Wars story. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not going to say no. Yeah, I'm always down for more Star Wars like Taylor. And Jack, I know you are too. I have a feeling this is not a Skywalker. I don't feel like... Mm. Is she going to be the main character? You know, she says that she, it's not what I expected. Maybe she, that makes her the main character. And she thought she was going to be, you know, the new Luke Skywalker as far as just kind of yeah, you know, guiding people. But, I mean, I could see them being successful in... You know, she's rebuilding the order. Her her students are the ones who are going to be doing the job, and she's there in the background to help out. And she has to come in and lay waste to some fools. I'm always down to see it, and I'd like to see Daisy. I th- I feel like she's gotten better all three movies as an actress. I didn't really think she was that strong in the first movie, but as it went on, mm. I thought she became a better and better actress. And I haven't really seen her in much else. So yeah, I'm down for it. I'm curious as to what <laughs> she expected versus what we're getting. And like Taylor said, I just want more Star Wars. I want to go to the movie theater and I want to see Star yeah. Wars. Yeah. So. <laughs> what else we got? Video games journalist and insider Jason Schreer, Schreer took to Reset Era to respond to the comments over the past few days and share what he's heard in relation to the KOTOR remix, which is Knights of the Old Republic, obviously. Schreer 
shared that he's spoken with two sources at Saber Interactive, the studio who were said to be working on the project, taking it over from Aspire. And those sources claim that they were still working on the eagerly anticipated project. So they, so they still do, they're still working on it. It's just not like a yeah. main priority right now. Yeah, it's not, it's not dead in and, the water like all the reports were saying, apparently. Um, well, yeah. we reported just last week or the week before that it was done. Yeah. That wasn't, yeah. it wasn't coming back. And you know, so. maybe he heard what we said and went, wait, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone yeah. says we're dead, but we're not. <laughs> so, I mean, he cared enough to come out and say it. Right. Yeah. So maybe, maybe the fans are getting what, uh, hopefully, what hopefully the, remake, the remake gets done. Hopefully. Yeah, I, I like it. I don't know. Definitely want to play this game. Like I know I've never played it. I tried to replay it. The graphics are just <laughs> bad, <laughs> you know. And I know oh it was God. good at the time, but I have it on my iPad and my phone. I've tried to get into it, but it's it's buggy and stuff. So like a smooth version of this game, I've heard nothing but you know love for this game from everyone who plays awesome. it. So I definitely, definitely hope that. Um, we do get this game finished and made and, you know, so hopefully we were, you know, this one's right. Last week was wrong or whatever, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully. All right. Just a couple of days ago, Vanity Fair revealed that Dave Filoni has taken on the role of chief creative officer at Lucasfilm in a piece that saw Filoni discuss the season in the first season in depth. But the topic Woo! of the season the topic of second season of Ahsoka was brought up in the piece. Filoni remained tight-lipped as the outlet shared that the second mm. season has still yet to be greenlit at Lucasfilm and Disney+. Plus. I've set up several threads that can continue. If not, I feel like, well, at least we got Ezra home, and that was really important. <laughs> but there's always a plan. I hope one day <laughs> we'll see it. Uh, it could be very cool, but it took a while to get Ahsoka done, so you never know. Always in motion is the future. In Classic fact, always, in motion, always in motion the future is but we won't we won't correct them we won't nitpick oh. we won't nitpick <laughs> yeah Love it. Um, he's like the yeah. next Chuck Norris though so it's like so, no no Disney is wrong <laughs> but uh yeah so I never trust anything that comes out of Dave's mouth he has been the best at smoke and mirrors yeah yeah one hundred percent. There's no there way. Is... Go on, Jimmy. There's no way he doesn't have like five seasons already written. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> That's literally exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> what do you think, Taylor? Um, you're right. He is actually pretty good at like what is that saying? Like, you see the stone in my hand, you miss the knife in my other hand, or whatever the hell the saying is. Like, yeah. so he he like. He got everybody going with the whole, like, who is Maroc? Oh, like, we'll even put Sam Witwer's voice in the credits at the very end just to throw everybody off. And, like, ah! and it turns out to be nobody. And it was probably, he's probably just sitting there laughing in his cowboy hat, like, ah, I tricked them all. And, but we love it. So I'm, yeah. There's, he's, he's definitely got stuff. He's very planned out. He takes tons and tons of notes about everything. He plans for the future always. We know that with the end of Rebels. He knew that he was going to get Ahsoka however many years later. Um, I I have faith in him. <laughs> I can't imagine he's happy with leaving Ahsoka and Sabine stranded at Peridia in another galaxy. There's absolutely no way. And if no. you don't get an Ahsoka <laughs> season two, those girls are coming back. You know, rumors are already floating around that Skeleton Crew is how they get back into the main universe. So we'll see. But yeah, so yeah, maybe I, we won't even get them. So good, too. Yeah, maybe it'll be with, Rebels. It's, it's, it's also, new... as well, not wrote off uh, Balin's story as well. Yeah. So, and then with his new, with the promotion he's just received, doesn't that give him creative control over, like, everything? Like, as far as, like, the stories and stuff like that? So... Pretty much, like he has the final say, but like, I don't. He's really good at working with, um, working with people, right? He's oh, good yeah. at sharing, and so. Cool, happy days. That pretty much um, rounds up the news for this week. Uh, obviously, the biggest news story I think at the minute is the promotion of 
um, Jedi Master Dave Filoni. And it brings, <laughs> us, brings us nicely into um, the part of the main show where essentially we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Dave Filoni, so who he is, where he's come from, uh, just for any new uh, Star Wars fans or anything like that. So uh, take it away, Taylor. What have we got? Sure. In 2005, Dave Filoni joined Lucasfilm as George Lucas's apprentice. <laughs> He's come a long way um, since 2005. He's created a lot of characters and a lot of projects. The characters that, well, some of the characters he's created is Ahsoka Tano, Ezra Bridger, Grogu, Sabine Wren, Kanan Jarrus, Balin Skull, Bo-Katan Kreese, Harris Sandula, Cad Bane, Merrick, the Grand Inquisitor, mostly Inquisitors, let's be honest, uh, Axe Woves, Paz Vizsla, and so many more in the Clone Wars. Just so many characters. Um, and we love these characters, hey guys? I would say that <laughs> this has been the bulk of our Star Wars over the last few years. I mean, outside yeah. of the films, that is Star Wars. I mean, Dave Filoni... I mean, he's created everyone that we're we talk about. Yeah, for the most part, <laughs> he's pretty much been the lead under under George Lucas, and there's there's nobody better. He pretty much knows all the law back to front. Uh, he's always chatting with all his uh, actors, producers, whoever he's working with about the law as well. I know there's quite a funny yeah. story about Sam Whitra and him having a conversation, and Sam Whitra had to had to uh, uh, correct him, which I thought was hilarious. Um, yeah, the I'd say that we're talking about him because he's essentially had a promotion at work. All right, uh, I know Jimmy's got a bit mm-hmm. of a lowdown. He's gonna you could go for a sec, Jimmy. But <laughs> essentially, Dave's got this promotion. So, what does that promotion mean? All right, says so Dave Filoni will now work much closer with Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy and Lucasfilm's head of development Carrie Beck. Beck's role will see her recruiting storytellers and filmmakers into the Star Wars universe and will also mm-hmm. originate and shepherd the next generation of Star Wars films and series, with Filoni weighing in on the narrative level during the development process. So he says in the, in that interview, if you guys get the chance to read it, where he, they'd always kind of bring him in because he is like the guy. Him and him and John Favreau would come in, but it was already things were already done. And he was just kind of like, oh, that's good, you, whatever. Not much you could do to change things or alter the path of it. Um, and it sounds like, and he says, uh, too, that he's not, it's not his job to tell filmmakers what to do, but he is going to be able to steer the stories in a more cohesive way, maybe. So we don't have that, well, I'm assuming we don't have that disconnect like we had in the first three, you know, in the in the prequels, I'm sorry, the sequels, um, mm-hmm. trying to fix things like that. Which is which is great because the man, like you said, Jack, the man knows Star Wars. He has been yeah. Star Wars since two thousand and five, and you know, um, so I'm excited for that. I'm sure he'll get a little bit more, um, you know, saying things. I, I'm a little worried yeah. that maybe this new, and you guys can tell me if you think I'm over, like not overstepping, but is this going to take away from him being creative? You know what I mean? Like, if he's he's becoming an office person, he's not a writer. I know he's had more and more things and he's directing and he's doing all this stuff, but like mm-hmm. now he's going to be in the office more, you know, not, yeah. and I, and I worry a little bit about like his creativity. And if he starts getting stunted Ooh. by like, he starts seeing things, you know, when a teacher becomes a principal, their, their, their problems change. You know, we yeah. sit there and we complain, complain, complain about, you know, principals and the people above us. But when you become the people above us, you're like, Oh, <laughs> that's why they did this, you know? So it's just, I'm a little bit worried. I don't want to obviously take him out because he has been such a force behind Star Wars like Taylor just, you know, rattled off yeah. all his characters. So, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. We we love him so much because currently he's on the floor. Like he's out in the field with the actors, with these creators, um the makeup artists, everything. He'll walk around the he'll walk around when all the people are getting dressed up and makeup up and he'll say, No, no, they don't have like this many scales and these ones are actually reflective and whatever. And he just knows these little tiny things and no, this breathing tube needs to go here because of this is what kind of alien they are. And there's I've even seen him like correct somebody in like driving a um a droid because the droid wasn't like rolling properly or the proper speed or something, and he just like fixed it right away. And it's not that he's telling people that they're doing something wrong. He's just, he's catching these little things and he knows how 
he knows Star Wars. As we keep saying, he knows Star Wars, right? He just has all these facts in his head. Um, and I, I want him to be on the floor. So you're right. If he's going to be in an office, it's going to be like, uh, I think we're going to feel it a little bit. Uh, hopefully, yeah. hopefully he's good in other ways too. <laughs> I think I think what you said earlier as well, um, Jimmy, that he's already got ideas. Like we said about the Ahsoka thing, you won't be surprised if he's already wrote five seasons of Ahsoka. So with him <laughs> waiting on the narrative stuff already, yes, he's going to be taken away from that creative part. However, I think if he's clever enough, which we know he is, and, and polite enough, that he'll sort of steer people into the direction and the creative way that he wants anyway. Um, yeah. I just think it it will put a lot of um, people's minds to rest. I think to try and keep the con continuity of the I couldn't pass the word for now. Just to make sure it just keeps going regularly and, and at a good pace, you know. And like you said as well, it's not out of sync. The, the connectivity of the stories and things like that. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, I don't know why my brain's going here, but any any other <laughs> issues with like um. He just one voice being in charge of that. You know, we have the story group with Pablo Hidalgo and a few other people. Are they going to all be working together? Are you going to have one? Because this is this is one of the things that like the writer strike was all about. Is like you know, and people were concerned about the next season of The Mandalorian because John Favreau was like, "Well, I already wrote it. Like yeah. I already <laughs> wrote it." Where as like yeah. you know, getting the acolyte, every all the success of Andor has been like all these different people working on it because like. Yeah, like, you know stuff, you know, like, but, you know, it's like the three of us when we work on this podcast, like, you know, we have a vision and then the rest of us come in and help each other out a little bit. And I don't think like any, yeah. not one of us could do it by ourselves. And I do hope that <laughs> um, he's still going to use Favreau and he's going to use like Pablo Hidalgo and those guys to help steer him yeah. as well. So we'll see. Should be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely for sure. Cause cool. anything else you want to mention on that? I think it'll really play out. I and mean, this is something we're not going to see the, the, we're not going to see anything about this, you know, in five years from now, we'll be able to look back and like, what, what was this move? Like, was this a great move? Yeah. You know, I don't yeah. think there's anything cause there's too much, go, too much already in the forward motion. Maybe he gets in there and he can correct a few things, but even if he does save something, we're never going to find out about it. You yeah. know, like if he had done something, yeah. so I think it'll, it'll be a few years down the road that we, uh, see that if this is working or not we can yeah. see the overall yeah <laughs> yeah it's definitely not gonna you're not gonna see results like you say next year or anything like that we've got to wait wait a little bit let a few things come out you know he's gonna be yeah. busy for, he's gonna be busy as well doing his movie um i think that's his his pinnacle or that's his goal i think at the minute yeah i forgot about that yeah and then, uh, that's the thing too like we'll keep going on about it there has to be a plan in place already. That's why I don't believe his hype about not having more shows planned and things like that. Because <laughs> you don't create a movie if you don't already have all the pieces. And they've two, I mean, under the same umbrella as Marvel, they've seen the success that Marvel's had with connecting everything. Yeah. yeah. Putting it all together. You know, if you get people who go out to see the Star Wars movie that haven't watched that stuff, they're going to go back and they're going to watch it. Yeah. It's just like bringing characters into live action. People, I bet you, I mean, I wish we could see the numbers. I guarantee you there's been an uptick in people watching the Clone Wars that enjoyed Ahsoka. Oh, I've never watched it before. Or, oh, or Rebels. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I, you know, there not being a plan, I think, is malarkey. Um, I think he's brought in because he does have a plan. And mm. this will give him a little bit more control. Um, yeah, I'd like to know who gave him this promotion. If it was Bob Iger, or if it was Kathleen Kennedy, like if there's tension at the top, you know, um, I'm not sure if he says that. Like who who gave him the promotion? Because like she's in charge of Lucasfilm, yeah, but Iger's in charge of the whole thing. I'd be curious as to know where the promotion came from. Um, yeah what's behind it but again we'll never know that's all behind closed doors maybe in 20 years when dave writes his memoirs we'll find <laughs> out something saucy <laughs> that, yeah. that'd be a fantastic thing imagine like a I'm book or a, di a diary of dave that'd be amazing <laughs> yes the journal of the dave <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be that'd be amazing I'd, I'd love to read that um but yeah like you said it's the whole thing of getting the anything that's a success they'll, they'll, they'll just jump straight onto it you know, it's mentioned no end of times that if, like we said in the news about Ray's film, if Ray's is a success, then it's not just going to be a standalone film, there's going to be more to it. 
Um, and they'd be silly not to, to be honest, because it's, it's a lot. It's, there's a lot of money in Star Wars, isn't there? Yeah. Oh, but, tons, yeah. tons of money. Nice. Okay, happy day. So uh, we're going to move into then the second uh, part of the main show, um, and we're going to be talking about uh, bounty hunters. Yeah, <laughs> bring them in cold, bring them in warm, or whatever he says. <laughs> <laughs> bring you in warm, or I can take you in cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so we what we're going to talk about now then is uh, Bounty Hunters, as always, we smashed it on the socials and Louis literally, especially on Twitter, absolutely took off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we have got an absolute ton of comments. Again, thank you so much to all the explorers for commenting. We love reading through your comments and as always, we will uh, endeavour to read as many as we can. Uh, we've grabbed a massive handful uh, and there's quite a lot of love for different variations of Bounty which I absolutely love. Starting with a <laughs> uh, friend of mine, Daryl Armstrong. Uh, his favourite is uh, Boba Fett, and he's liked him from the beginning. Also, we've got Here Is, and they mentioned that they love uh, Django Fett. All right, on Twitter, we had, from a, a certain point of view, mentioned Embo, Great. which I was surprised. People, yeah. Um, and we also had Darth Herring 96, Josh Tano. And retired Jedi medic mentioned they love Cad Bane. Cad Bane. <laughs> what have you got, Taylor? Darth Kevin mentioned that Fennec Shand uh, was his favorite, and Forrest mentioned that Aura Singh was his favorite. Aura Singh is that she's like white, uh, really pale skin, and she has the ponytail and then like the radio antenna. Yeah, yeah, she was in. She was in. Uh, Phantom Menace. What the. Uh, the Phantom Menace for like 0. 0.5 yeah, seconds, and like, then they had a whole story about her. Yeah, she's and, like, I'm up on the cliff um, during the pod race, right? Yeah, yeah. so you do see her yeah, live yeah. action for like a second. <laughs> yeah. um, we had loads more comments as well. as a lot of love, like I said, for Boba Fett from Marcus w- uh, Wizard, Emperor Katarn, and a whole lot of love for Cad Bane. We've already mentioned quite a few, but we've got some more. Echo, Deck the Holdo, I love that name. Uh, Napoleon <laughs> Palpatine, and also... I don't know how true this is, or if it is the person, but Cad Bane himself, he tweeted that he liked himself. <laughs> uh, so we'll, uh, we'll we'll see where that takes us. Uh, we'll do some digging on that. You gotta love but, yourself yeah. first. <laughs> yeah. But again, thank you. So, so that so confirms much. he's still alive, then, right? Oh, <laughs> possibly. Yeah. The body was never found. The blinking button. I tell you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, yes, so just thank you so much to all the explorers as always. Again, feel free to hit us on the socials at Explore the Force, uh, email in as well. Uh, we've got loads more coming shortly now for our bounty hunter theme. All right, uh, on today's show, I've got some questions for Jimmy and Taylor. Oh, gosh. Uh, and the first question is going to be So, bounty hunters, are we a fan of them? Who wants to go first? Jimmy, go first. Uh, yes. I think they have some good, a lot of good stories. I think there's a lot of it's that a lot of hype around characters who've never done anything uh, that yep. look cool. But I would love, 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 love to get ourselves, you know, the Mando started out that way, kind of veers off in a different direction. Boba Fett didn't really do much of it. I'd like to see an actual bounty hunter show where it stays yes. bounty hunting. Um, even if it's just the villain of the week or whatever, but uh, yeah, I love them. I, I think that they're, it's a, they're, you know, covering that mystique, you know, just like the old Texas Rangers and things like that of the old days. So um, Taylor, what about you? Do you like the bounty hunters? I'm not going to say that I don't like them. But I've never been one to get into all the bounty hunter like comic books and stuff like that. And like I probably couldn't name all of the bounty hunters that are standing there behind Darth Vader and the and um, the Emperor in Empire Strikes Back. But I'm not saying I don't like them. No. I'm in the yeah. in the middle, floating in the middle. <laughs> I absolutely love them. I absolutely love yeah. all the bounty hunters. Honestly. Oh my gosh. I'm with Jimmy. So, like, obviously, you have these, like, TV series in the UK, like uh, EastEnders or Casual, basically primetime TV. How good would it be, like Jim was saying there? Because I know The Mandalorian started off like that, but it was literally, you're just following a bounty and a collecting, and the whole story is you're just getting rich. <laughs> <laughs> the life of a bounty hunter. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd absolutely love it. 
Cool, happy days. So, uh, next question then is what more do you want from Bounty Hunters? I'll quickly just start us off because I sort of touched on it, but I want like a TV series of just a Bounty Hunter uh, going around. I'd also like to see more of a personal side of a Bounty Hunter and how they live rather than just mm. killing people or whatever and collecting bounties. I'd like to see what they actually do in the background because some of these Bounty Hunters, for you know, could... Um, could have, could have families in that. Who knows? Yeah. What about you, Jimmy? Two things. I want a video game yes. where you get to be a bounty hunter. Like, legit. doesn't need to be canon. I don't care. Um, I want a good bounty hunter game. And then I'd also like... I don't. Have you guys read the Aftermath series? No. Nah. Mm -hmm. By uh, Chuck Wendig? So that whole series, you know, comes after. It's kind of supposed to be the, you know, what jump starts... Um, the next phase of Force Awakens uh, phase, yeah, yeah. And there's a group of characters in there that are bounty hunters, but they're bounty hunting the Imperials, like like almost kind of like going after Nazis after World War II. Nice. Oh, that's and it's so a real cool. neat. It's a it's a cool crew. There's um, Snip. Uh, what's the guy? The the pilot that dies at the end of uh, the Rise of Skywalker. Snap Wexley's mom's part of this. <laughs> Snap is part of it with his droid. He's got a former Imperial uh, ISB agent. There's an alien. I can't remember what she is. Um, and then there's a guy that's like a special forces guy. And they go and they basically work as a team and they track down um, Imperials that are trying to like flee and hide and start things back up. And I would love, 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 love to see a show because, you know, the ISB agent, is, I can't think of his name, but he's hilarious. Um, he's openly gay character in that too. Um, <laughs> you have like this weird love interest between the human and the uh, alien bounty hunter oh that's in that. Um, then you have the mother daughter thing going on as well. It has everything that you would want. Oh. And I think if those books had been better received, we might've gotten more about this, but I've always um, nice. thought that that would be a really good like bounty hunting story. And like you talked about Jack seeing like, the emotions and things like that. Yeah. yeah, I can't imagine with that group of characters, you could do a ton of stuff with. So much. Yeah. So I'd love to see much. that. That is such a good idea. What about you, Taylor? Uh, well, Jimmy said it first, but I would love a video game, but like an open world video game. And I mm. think I think we're going to be getting one. I just don't know. Yeah. That outlaw game, maybe? Yeah, like, I don't know if that one's going to have a storyline mm. or create your own character or your this character. But um, if you could create, like, your own complete own bounty hunter, like, right down to, like, eyebrow position. Like, you know what I mean? Like, those fun games. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That would be so fun. You have your own blasters. Like, you could, like, have your own ship, design your own ship. You could take on different jobs and, like, little mini missions and, like, open the maps to, like, new spaces of the galaxy. And, like, oh, oh, my gosh. It'd be so cool. Like, like, oh, God, I have to get this new part for my ship so that I can fly to this part of the galaxy, which I haven't unlocked yet. And, ooh, oh, it gets me so excited, and it's not even a thing yet. <laughs> so, somebody yeah, listening. That would be, be a lot of fun. Make a game <laughs> yeah. where we can all that'd play together fun. and, like, meet up with each mm. other. Oh. That'd be all right. right that would got, be so <laughs> fun. You've got it in Knots the Old Republic where you can make your own buy on that. That's probably the closest thing you can do. Oh, oh, can you imagine if the new KOTOR game that now I feel like might actually happen was like that? Oh, oh my gosh. Be sweet. I, I think that given the ability to build your own character, pick your own alien, do all that kind of stuff, I mean, that would be, that'd be huge. Yeah, they, be so fun. They, they, do, they do it now in um, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, um, the PC game, but it's just a bit too cartoony, mm. I think. Um, yeah. But yeah. Nice. Uh, and then the last question um, what makes a bounty hunter? So, what makes it a bounty hunter for you then, Taylor? Because obviously, we mentioned about Ty Yorick. What makes a, a think, bounty hunter to you? Yeah, I think just like taking money in exchange for a job to essentially kill something <laughs> or find something or take care of a job. So, like a bounty is money, right? Or credits, whatever. So, um yeah the fact that ty yorick is like a monster hunter for hire i think that like i think that totally counts and she might not be killing people which she pretty sure she does doesn't like to but because <clears throat> she still has some of her jedi morals but yeah doing a job for money i believe i don't think she has to be a part of a guild yeah 
Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty pretty on side with you there, Tadell. Mine's pretty much the same as well. Doing some yeah. form of job for a contract to, for some sort of benefit, I think, let alone money could be yeah. anything as well. Exactly. Yeah. What about you, Jimmy? Uh, you guys pretty much sum that up. I'm going to go a different direction. What makes a bounty hunter? Their style and their look. Yeah. Yes. Oh, awesome. Because really like. <laughs> <laughs> obviously it's got a job to do, but yeah. I think like, you know, we base all of them off of what Ooh. we like and what resonates with us. So Looks, um, yeah. just think about the success of Stop. Boba Fett. The guy was in the movies for five seconds and because he looked <laughs> badass and was so cool. Good nod. Head, I mean, head right. Nod. So yeah. <laughs> Little head nod, and yeah, so yeah, for me, style and you know, just mystique around them. So that's what makes a bounty hunter for me, yeah. <laughs> um, next thing, then, okay, we uh chose five bounty hunters, I think we went with our top five bounty hunters, um, who they were and why they're in our top five. Again, uh, like Jimmy said, there is absolutely loads of bounty hunters uh, out there in the Star Wars universe, uh, and we gathered five of our favorites. Uh, and we'll start with number five. I'll start us off just to kick us off. And it's quite a controversial one. But it's going to be a side adventurous. When she turned mm. to the bounty hunter, oh. she was badass. You know, and that is the bounty hunter. If, if, if I was a rich person in those days and I needed someone disappearing, she'd be the bounty hunter I'd go to straight away. <laughs> you know? Did she yeah, keep it like yeah. seriously? She, 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 she was, did, right? No questions asked. Yeah. The job was done. Uh, and she still used all the powers and everything. She was amazing. Uh, so for me, number five, Sarge Ventress. What about you, Jimmy? Well, because my number five was also a Sarge Ventress, I'm going to no give honorable way. mentions. <laughs> so my I, honorable mentions are going to go to IG-11 and Black Chrysanthemum for the stuff they've done in the comics and then, of course, in uh, in Mando and everything like that. Yeah, but a Sarge Ventress, like her character, and I think it's one of the things, too, because there's not a lot of her being a bounty hunter. But I think her character arc and everything like that, like she deserves, you know, recognition. And when everything fell apart for her, she became a bounty hunter. And there's some, some episodes in the Clone Wars with her. And then, of course, she's the one that runs into Ahsoka when Ahsoka gets blamed for the death. Um, and is getting set up. Mm -hmm. So she runs into her. And then, of course, she, you know, she does the right thing. She would have been a hell of a Jedi. Oh, yeah. That's all I know. But, um, yeah, so my number five is also Asajj Ventress. Nice. What about you, Taylor? Um, my number five is Fennec Shand. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, because she is awesome, and like you guys said, as soon as you search uh, bounty hunters on the internet, like 50 of them come up. So Fennec Shand definitely pops up for me because she is yeah. terrifying. Um. <laughs> and uh you know she's she's fearless her even the lady the actress who plays Fennec Shan is Wynn. like super yes she she was in um like marvel shows as well and like she's just so fit and she's so able to do all these maneuvers and she doesn't even really need um like a, a, a double right like she does a lot of the stuff herself which is like really cool so yeah she's pretty cool and now she's got robotic gut, so <laughs> she don't need to eat, and she ain't gonna get fat. So no. she's gonna keep fit, she's gonna stay fit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stay alive forever. <laughs> like it. <laughs> nice. Uh, next then is our number four. Uh, we'll start with you, Jimmy, this time, so people don't think we keep copying each other. What have you got? All right, I got Din Djarin coming in at number four. Nice. Um, some of the early stuff he did. You know, episode three, when he goes back and he rescues Grogu, and I think that's episode three. Yeah. Anyways, he, and then some of the stuff he does in Boba Fett, you know, because he's bounty hunting and Boba Fett, you know, that, some of the best stuff in Boba Fett. But yeah, I think he was pretty cool. I wish that they would get back to, I hope when season four comes back around that he's doing more of that bounty hunting stuff or we get some you know, shoot off episodes. I don't know if there need to be filler or not, but I think Din Djarin is a pretty solid character. I know that. Was, so I'm going to go with him for my number four bounty hunter. Nice. What about you, Ty? Uh, my number four is going to be Black Crescent. Yeah. <clears throat> because who doesn't want a giant, like, crazy evil looking Wookiee? <laughs> like, 
this guy has like black fur, like crazy yellow eyes. Um, he doesn't let, well, he's not a good guy. We'll go with that. He just kind of lets his anger and his emotions, um, as we saw in Boba Fett, uh, control his actions <laughs> he doesn't really think before he does but uh and i think he's also a total yeah player, he is so. all for summer fantastic yeah yeah and that scar that he has is actually supposed to be from um uh obi yeah. Kenobi. so we'll see we'll see <laughs> the comic book would line up with that but yeah well it, the, it is it does happen in yeah. the comic, yeah. right so so, for it to already be there means that that has already happened. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Next uh, for me, at number four is um, it's two battle hunters together because uh, they work yeah. together quite often, and it's Zuckus uh, and Forlong. Mm-hmm. Now, Forlong, for those that don't know, is essentially <laughs> like a protocol joy that used to be on his ship. Essentially, works alongside Zuckus. Him and him and Zuckus are two peas in a pod, like twins, essentially. However, Zuckus uh, is like a gang bounty hunter. Uh, and the best way I can describe Zuckus is like, it looks like a fly, I think, is the best way I can describe him. Uh, but he's actually yeah. force sensitive and has visions. Uh, and some of the stuff in the Bounty Wars uh, comics with his visions is amazing. He's got such a great bond with uh, Forlong, uh, where they're going back and forth, trying to get back to, back to each other. Uh, you, you have a good sense of friendship, and, and it's quite a um, refreshing look on bounty hunters, bounty hunters and their emotions, I think. Um, but yeah, oh. he, he's he's a really good bounty hunter as well, because with his visions, he uses all his, his meditation and that to help him hunt down his uh, his fugitives. So Zuckus and, and Fall on for me at uh, number four. Next time, we've got number three. Mm-hmm. Taylor, going to start us off. What have we got for number three? My number three is Django Fett. Because without Jango Fett, we would not have any of our clones um, that we love so much. Um, and we wouldn't have Boba Fett either. And I know a lot of people love Boba Fett. I do too. But um, And let's let's be honest. He put up quite a fight against Obi-Wan on uh, Kamino. So uh, that's probably one of my favorite fights uh, in the prequels. It's, it's so good, yeah. right? Yeah. And and I I mean like Tim where I'm more than with hair it's just <laughs> you know <laughs> it's awesome <laughs> nice what about you Timmy yeah. <clears throat> I've got Fennec Shan coming in at number three and I put Ming Na Wen just because well you know uh, this is <laughs> so but um my big thing for her was how <laughs> she, I mean like Taylor said she's a badass she is in yeah. you know she's made it into this uh, sorry the, into the Bad Batch. Yeah. She's live action. And the way she deals with things at the end of Boba Fett, because if you remember, she just disappears from that whole like end fight scene. And then she lowers yeah. herself down from the ceiling and just wipes out all the pikes. And I just put yeah. uh, <laughs> his next level. I would never trust her, but I would want her on my side. So, yeah, I thought she was awesome. And the, just the fact that um, just stuff that she did in the shows that she's been in, she's she's pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Great choice. Great choice. Uh, for me, at number three, uh, it's Cad Bane. Um, I just love how cool and slick he is. Uh, I love mm. how genius he is as well. And you see a lot of that come out in the Clone Wars animated stuff. Oh, where tons, you, yeah. So many times the Jedi think they've got him and you think, yeah, he's cornered now. And something, whatever he comes up with, is just pure genius. Uh, I think it, at, at the point of the Clone Wars, he's probably there, apart from Dooku, probably. Is their toughest enemy that they they go against because um, he just yeah. he just make it makes them look silly so many times, doesn't he? You know. Yeah, he's just he's no but he's no bull fodder. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and then as you know, then, straight to the point. And a lot of it, he trained or helped train uh, Boba. He brought he brought him up, uh, took him up. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously the live action, absolutely loved him in live action. It's a shame that they killed him off. I'm honest. Such a big character, but like we said earlier to Jimmy to be fair, and I just thought because she said it is you don't actually see his body. There's no mention of him. Yeah. But like I mean you see him at the end, but his like chest thing is still beeping, so it's like <laughs> like the red flashing. So And it's I think it's still alive. Alive. You know, <laughs> anyone can come back because Boba Fett did. So Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's my uh number three. Uh 
I'll start us off uh, straight off the bat with uh, number two. And um, for me, number two is going to be Mando. Uh, again, mm. absolutely love the Mandalorian anyway. As one knows that, uh, such a great character. Uh, and yeah. I'm not going to harp on too much about Mandalorian and who he is because everyone does know who he is. Uh, but yeah. I absolutely love Mandalorian. <laughs> absolutely love him. What about you, Jimmy? Who have you got for number two? I have Cad Bane as my number two. Nice. That hat, the Western, you know, he is everything that <laughs> I think they, you know, they wanted Star Wars to be the Western is just his look, his vibe. And he has that code, man. His he doesn't voice. break the code. Yeah, his voice is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and even when he's being a bad dude, he still follows like that code and doesn't break yeah. it. Um, and so, just the fact that he's branched Clone Wars, he's been in Bad Batch, he's been in live action now. Yeah. Uh, we have tons of him. I don't like the way he treats droids, but, um, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, I think he's pretty cool. And I'd, if I was going to be a bounty hunter, I'd want to be taught by him. Yeah. Yeah. Good, right. good shout. What have you got, Taylor? My number two was also going to be uh, Din Djarin, but I was also going to add in Grogu because there's a few things that uh, Din wouldn't have been able to get out of without Grogu. <laughs> um, yeah. The Mudhorn, for one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Would have been a short F season. A <laughs> short season. <laughs> With like three ep- Was that episode four or something? <laughs> it was like episode two, I think. Is it actually? Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, obviously, everybody is going to love Din Djarin because he is just the bounty hunter the like in this like time era for us right um and he just it, it, they've made this character so connected like you can connect with this character like it's everybody has this kind of bond with someone their son their daughter their dog um and he's just trying to make his way through the galaxy and he's trying to get his job done and he's losing his ship and he just keeps getting dragged into stuff. And I just think he's super, super relatable. Um, and I mean, yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> That's why I love uh, Mandalorian is number two. Nice. Okay. Uh, number one. Uh, who have got for number one, Taylor? For number one, um, so I'm not somebody who has really followed the Bounty Hunter stuff. Like, I obviously love Star Wars, but Bounty Hunters has not really been my pull. Um, so right now I'm obsessed with the High Republic, as you guys <laughs> all know. And we all kind of read the High Republic in this podcast. So my favorite Bounty Hunter, and I'm honest, I'm actually being totally honest, is Ty Yorick. And her name is Ty Lara. Um, actually, and she was um, a Jedi in the High Republic era, the 200 years before Phantom Menace. Um, she wandered off with her friend, and she ended up having to kill him because he was like... Anyways, I'm not going to get into it. So after she had to kill her best friend, she left the Jedi Order. And then she became a saber for hire, and she is a monster hunter, so yeah. she only kills the monsters that kill people and she only helps people when they ask, please help me. Can you help me? Uh, she's force sensitive. She's a, a Thilopian. So she has the really cool white head tendrils um, and she's <coughs> kept her lightsaber and it's like a purple one and she's modified it. It's like super badass. Um, and she, this character is in the rising storm um oh, and she's also yeah she's also in race to crash point tower which is an okay book in the high republic phase one um and then she has a couple comics um that i'm reading Mon- oh, what's this one? Oh, i don't even have it here because it's in my room um is it monster yeah is it, i don't know Antique, I've, I've got temple. It yeah. yeah so yeah. she's she's pretty awesome and she like connects with the jedi and yeah and she's yeah She's super, super cool. Nice. I'd love to see her in live action, but probably won't happen. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, <sighs> My next, <number> one. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, hopefully it's different to Jimmy's. I've got a feeling it might not be. Is Bosk. I absolutely <laughs> love Bosk. Is it Bosk, Jimmy? It's not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, like my boss, really quick. Uh, the guy is such a badass. You, you hardly see him first introduced on Empire Strikes Back. But after that, if you followed his story with the comics that he's in, 
he is relentless. That guy is relentless. It, um, he is the most famous and feared bounty hunter of uh, the Wookiees as well. Uh, he specialises oh. in hunting um, Wookiees. So, yeah, there's not one to be um, disregarded in that sense. And a fact that not many people know is that his dad was the one that created the uh, Bounty Hunter Guild as well. Uh, Kredosk. Kredosk? Kredosk? Is his dad's name. Uh, and yeah, so that's how he came into the profession. Obviously, because of Trandoshan as well, he can regenerate his limbs. Uh, and there's, yeah. a good, there's a good little uh, arc <laughs> where they're all um, they're all fighting each other on the... Uh, I can't remember the, 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 the planet's name. Uh, one of the, the War of the Bounty Hunters where he literally gets left for dead and ends up uh, pretty much chewing, up, chewing off his own arm to get out. Um, but yeah, Bosk is my number one. Absolutely love him. <laughs> Who have you got, Jimmy? Nice. All right, so as soon as we brought this topic up, this guy always pops into my head. He had some really cool stuff. and I've only seen him in the Clone Wars, but I'm going to have to go with Embo. And people who don't know who Embo is, he's a Kyozo male bounty hunter, and he has that round hat, and he uses it as a weapon. He, sl he sled rides on it. Um, <laughs> and he's worked with Asajj. He's worked with Ur Singh. He's worked with Cad Bane. He's uh, he's done things for good guys. He's done things for bad guys. This guy has a really crazy story. The more I was reading about him, uh, the more I, I couldn't believe some of the stuff. You know, of course, he's worked for the Huts and he's worked with Boba Fett. And towards the end of some of the stuff I was reading, he also has his pet Anuba, so it's like his dog. And of course, you know, <laughs> me and dogs. So like, I don't know probably why I was drawn to him, but. Any guesses what the dog's name is? And I think you two are going to blow a gasket when you hear this name. Um, I want to see a picture of the dog. I'm looking at him. I see who you're talking Called about. Called it Anuba. Is. Anuba is the name of the animal. Anuba. Anuba is the name of the animal. And the dog's, the animal's name is Maroc. Uh -huh. Merrick. <laughs> so, of uh, course it is. So Merrick. And uh, he uses them, and he also has this cool ship, uh, like a flying saucer, almost uh, called the Guillotine. And if it's oh. if this is true, um, after the New Republic comes around, because he, he he survives all that nonsense, he is now oh. a farmer on Felucia, just chilling. Nice. Dang. So, but that how about that story? How about this story, right? <sighs> you know, he opens up. There's this guy out in the fields farm, and it's kind of like a whole taken thing. His daughter gets taken. He's like, I've got skills, you know, and he just he goes crazy. <laughs> that should be the next movie <laughs> that comes out of uh, Lucasfilm is taken Star Wars version with Embo awesome. as the main character. But oh he'd also fought God. Anakin and held him <laughs> off. So, But, yeah, he's a pretty cool uh, character. I don't know why I always – seeing him in Clone Wars is pretty – really neat character development. Is yeah. really cool design. The hat, the dog, the ship. Yeah. So I'm going to go with Embo. Nice. Is he nice. in that episode of the Clone Wars where Kenobi has to become a different person and that he's like trying to oh. be a uh, bounty hunter as well? Is he in yeah. that? Uh, I no. think so, yeah. No, I don't think, I don't think he's in that one. Because he, they all, all of those bounty hunters like get it in that big testing yeah. place. Yeah, right? so he's not in there because he survives through all that. Yeah. He's yeah. Not oh. No. Nah. Well. Cool. Okay, so that's, um, our top five uh, bounty hunters. Hunters, obviously. Again, please hit up the socials if there's anyone or you've got a completely different top five. Please let us know. Again, a special yeah. shout out to some of those bounty hunters that we haven't mentioned. I think might be worth mentioning is obviously uh, Valance. Again, he's in the comics, mm. um, which is ending yeah, in January. Yeah, he's absolutely fantastic. He actually uh, trained with Han Solo at the Academy uh, for the Empire. Oh. So that's how you meet him. Uh, yeah, decent guy. Um, but yeah, there's, there's hundreds of bounty hunters. And like I said, I just keep telling people, get out there and, and, and get amongst it. Clearly, I need to. <laughs> cool. So if you were a bounty hunter, if you were a bounty hunter, what would your choice of weapon be? Uh, what ship would you have? And a little bit about your background. Who wants to go first? Hmm. I'm trying to think. I would want to have VCX 100, like a ghost type ship, I think. Just because that's my favorite ship. And 
Um, my background would be my family was taken out by this, the Red <laughs> Dawn or Crims, Crimson Dawn Syndicate, yeah. and my, <laughs> I got started by going in and taking them all out, and then um, Weapon. Hmm. Oh, that's another thing I forgot to mention about Embo. He has a bowcaster like Chewy. Uh, I'm not big enough to. I don't think I'm big enough to shoot a bowcaster. So, um, yeah, you I'm are. To think. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with like a laser whip, like Vernestra Rose lightsaber, like some kind awesome. of like like I like just... whip, you know. So I think <laughs> that's what I would do. My my family... Yeah, I know. <laughs> I probably, of course. I'd have a trusty char hound at my side that, um, all the, I take it all back. I want my, my weapons would be my char hounds. Not <laughs> so. <I'd be> like, <laughs> char hound. So Fire char hound. Yeah. Just <laughs> sizzle. So yeah, that's what I would, that's my story. Uh, what about you, Taylor? Uh, um, my weapon. I mean, obviously, everyone's going to have a blaster down, hidden in their boot or whatever. But those super cool little, um, the hand knives from Solo. Mm, the, the yeah. Games, yeah. He's got yeah, them those and they just slick. glow up. And really, yeah, just whip those out like, like you wouldn't even know it. I could just get you. Um, and then, Dang. you know, double tap always. So. <laughs> <laughs> different different species have different brains and hearts and organs everywhere. You just have to double tap everything. <laughs> First world bounty hunting. Um, my ship, I have always really, really loved the mantis. Uh, and despite my favorite hair color being blue, well, my favorite everything blue, um, I would want the red, the red and the silver. Looks Ooh, really, really cool. A good one. Yeah. Um, so I'd want that because it has a really cool map. Um, and I feel like if I'm going to be a bounty hunter, making lots of money, bringing in fools, then I want to be living it up. So I'm going to be in a yacht uh, cruiser. Um, and let, let's be honest, we've seen the thing go into battle. It's still awesome. So and lots of space inside and background. So like my story. Ooh. I don't know. Um, Honestly, I would hit up a planet that has lots of beaches and that is warm. And I think I would just do little jobs like that. And I'd probably just live on my ship because, you know, you got to nice. live in your ship. <laughs> nice. Nice. I like it. Uh, I think for me, I'd be similar to you, Jimmy. I'd have a, like a Vibro blade of some sort. I'd have, I'd have a shield as well. And, but I'd have blasters as oh. well, like, like a little backup. I think ship wise, yeah. it'd have to be the Razor Quest crest because I absolutely loved that ship. I did, and they blew that up, man. Such a loss. But yeah, That's I'd horrible. Hundred percent, I'd have that. And then in terms of background, I'd be uh, an orphan, and I think my whole storyline would be either to go around killing the huts that that did the hit on my parents, or just hunting Ooh. bounty hunters that did the hit. You know, it's like a general nice. hatred for bounty hunters. Um, yeah, that could that'd be a pretty cool story, but yeah, I think that's probably uh, where I'd go in that sort of direction for that. I think that pretty much wraps it up now for what we've um, got for today's show. Um, <laughs> so yeah, again, thanks for listening to all the explorers as usual. Please hit us up on the socials at exploretheforce dot com on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, tre uh, threads. What else we got? Pretty much, oh, YouTube, keep getting YouTube all week, <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, yeah. The, the YouTube. So, any yeah, final Facebook words? Chats. Any final words from any of you? Um, I guess that's just for me for life and life. <laughs> <laughs> for me, then, I'll take any job for the right price. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And for all of us, we have spoken. <laughs> See you next week. Yeah.